The Curious Case of Huey Fury. Now, Huey Fury is set to face Sam Sexton. I believe it's this weekend he's fighting Sam Sexton for the British heavyweight title. And the winner of this bout between Huey Fury and Sexton will be mandated to fight Joe Joyce. And a week or so ago, might have been two weeks ago, somebody posted this fact in my Facebook boxing group, Hatman Boxing. They said that this fight at some point is going to be ordered between the winner of Fury Sexton and the winner of Joe Joyce against Lemroy Thomas. And they tagged me in it, asking me who I think would win the fight. And my reply was, I don't think this fight is going to happen. I don't see Joe Joyce and Huey Fury happening anytime soon simply based on Huey Fury's track record. Because other than when he stepped up to world level and faced Joseph Parker for the heavyweight title, Huey Fury's career has been punctuated by poor quality opposition and a reluctance to face high quality opposition and when I mean reluctance I really do mean reluctance because Huey Fury has turned down fights with the likes of Deontay Wilder several times Anthony Joshua several times Dylan White at least once maybe more and now people Huey Fury has proven me right in this instance because in this interview here with his dad and trainer Peter Peter has said, we're not interested in facing Joe Joyce. We're looking for bigger and better things. That's what Peter Fury has said. In the past, Peter Fury gave various different reasons why his son Huey wasn't going to fight the likes of Wilder, Joshua, and Dylan White. When it came to Dylan White, Peter Fury said, we don't fight friends. And then, bizarrely, earlier on this year, Huey Fury tried to claim that it was Dylan White who avoided the fight. His own dad came out and turned down the Dylan White fight publicly. They were supposed to fight for the British title, I think it was, what, a couple years ago now? It was the Fury team who turned it down. It wasn't Dylan White who turned it down, he was bang up for the fight. And when they say we don't fight friends, well, are they not friends with Joseph Parker? When they say we don't fight friends, Dylan White had no problem fighting friends. So why did they have a problem? This is why I say the curious case of Huey Fury. You know, odd stuff, odd stuff. So as I say, go and watch this interview right here with his dad, Peter Fury. They're not interested in the Joe Joyce fight. So it's really irrelevant then for me to start speculating who I think would win the fight because they've turned it down <laughs> before it's even been mandated or anything like that they've shut that possibility down I don't know who Huey Fury is going to fight next if it is a step up back to world level then maybe I'll have to retract my statement <laughs> maybe it will change my view on Huey Fury but at this point in time I have to say that Huey Fury is one of the most protected prospects slash contenders in world heavyweight boxing right now. Yeah, he's one of the most protected. He did have to step up against Joseph Parker because it's a world title shot. You have to take your opportunities when they come. But outside of that, the quality of opposition has been atrocious through 21 fights. And continuing on, against an over-the-hill Sam Sexton who was only ever British level in the first place. Very strange. I say very strange as well because Huey Fury is actually talented. It's not like he ain't a talented boxer. He is talented. He's not the most entertaining guy at all. He could put a glass eye to sleep. There are plenty of Huey Fury fights which I've skipped on because it's just too damn boring to watch. But... Just because he's boring, it doesn't mean 
he's not effective. He is effective. He is talented. And so I struggle to understand why they're being so careful with him. A lot of the Huey Fury fanatics, and there are some who are just Fury fanatics in general, a lot of them will say, well, he's only 23 years old. Give him time. It's really not about age, people. I've said this before. It's really not about age. It's about how many fights you've had and how good you are. Huey Fury had plenty of fights as an amateur. He turned pro at 18. He's been professional now. Look how many years, people. He's been professional since 2013. For five years, he's been a pro. So it's really not about age. He's had 21 fights. Isn't that a similar number of fights to Anthony Joshua? You know, you look at Amir Khan. People say, oh, he's only 23. Look who Amir Khan was fighting when he was 23. Okay, he was born in... Where's his, uh, where's his date of birth here? All right. December. 8th of December, 86. 8th of December, 86, right? So 96, he would have been... 10, 06, he would have been 20 in December of those years. So, by December 07, he was 21. He was fighting Graham Earl, which was a Commonwealth title fight. By, where are we at, where are we at now? His first real fight was in 09, before December. So he must have been what? In his 20s by then, early 20s by the time he fought Katelnik for the title. And he was 23, I believe, when he fought Malinaji and Maidana. He was 23 by this time, Amir Khan. Malinaji, Maidana and Judah when he was 23. He would have just turned 24 when he fought Peterson. He was still 24 when he fought Garcia. This is Amir Khan, people. When he was Huey Fury's age, he stepped up to world level and he stayed at world level. He wasn't going back down to domestic level. And he was a flawed fighter. You know, Huey Fury is technically good. He's not a guy who's been dropped in several fights, knocked out or anything like that. He's not a guy who is raw. In terms of the way he throws punches and what he does. No, he's he's pretty slick. He's very slick, actually. He's good on his feet. He's got a nice jab. He knows how, how to protect himself. So why is he still being fed all these cream puffs? After five years as a pro. 21 fights in. And he's only had one real fight, which was against Joseph Parker. What's that all about? Maybe I'm overestimating Huey Fury's ability. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe he... I mean, even in a Joseph Parker fight, right? Because I would speculated maybe he's not the strongest guy mentally. But he didn't seem mentally weak to me in the Joseph Parker fight. Yes, he fought negatively. But that's how he always fights. And he thought he was winning fighting that way. And many people thought he did win. So why change it? Why step on the gas when you think... You're winning on the back foot. So I just don't understand why his fights are so meticulously cherry picked. Why can't he fight a Joe Joyce? Or, you know, somebody, one of the guys at domestic level who's actually going to give him a proper fight. I'm not sure if Huey Fury is actually related to Nathan Gorman. He might be. So perhaps that's why the Nathan Gorman fight can't happen. But one of the guys out there, Nick Webb. I mean, I doubt Hearn would put him in with Dubois. Dubois is very, very green indeed. Nick Webb is also green, but I think Nick Webb, because of his age, will be looking to take bigger fights. Um, But yeah, you know what? <laughs> Why is Huey Fury so against going in there with anyone that's going to be competitive? Unless it's an opportunity for a world title. As I say, it's hard to turn them opportunities down. So, let me know what you guys think about the curious case of Huey Fury, people. <laughs>
you know, after shout out to my boy Woody, Woody Burns. Uh, he said that if Huey Fury versus Joe Joyce was made, Mick Hennessy would call it Shades of Ali versus Shades of Foreman. <laughs> Gotta love Mick Hennessy. And yeah, I have noticed the similarity in terms of the way Joe Joyce moves to George Foreman, a young George Foreman. He moved in a very similar way. Joe Joyce don't have the brute force power of a George Foreman, but just in terms of the way he moves and throws weird looking punches and stuff and looks clunky, that's how a, a prime Foreman used to look as well. He looked very, very odd and clunky Foreman when he moved around the ring as a, as a young man. Very, very strange stance and boxing style, but weirdly effective. And Joe Joyce doesn't have the brute power that Foreman had, but he's still got decent power. He's not feather fisted by any means, but he's got more work rate, I think, than a young George Foreman. Throws more punch. He's, he's much bigger than a young George Foreman too. George Foreman was only, what, 6'4", 220, about that in his prime. Joe Joyce is 6'6", 240 something. Isn't he Joe Joyce? Must be in the 240s or maybe 250. A very, very big guy. So, anyway, yeah. <laughs> Shades of Ali versus Shades of Foreman. <laughs> it's a shame it ain't happening. Uh, if you guys want to speculate on who you think would win, a lot of people w were picking Huey Fury. You know, in that post I talked about in my Facebook boxing group, a lot of people were saying, yeah, Huey Fury could win that fight. Well, Clearly, his dad, Peter, is not as confident as the people picking Huey Fury to win on Facebook. He's clearly not as confident. Because if he was, it's a great chance to boost Huey Fury's profile, right? Because Joe Joyce has got a bigger profile right now than Huey Fury has in the UK, I would argue. Because of Joe Joyce's association with David Hay. And also because of the fact that most of his fights have been on free-to-air terrestrial television. He just had a big, he, he had a, a big opportunity to showcase his talent on Sky Pay-Per-View, on Sky Box Office. But before that, his fights were on Dave. You know, so right now, Joe Joyce is a more talked about fighter in British boxing than Huey Fury is. So Huey Fury could have helped himself in terms of his reputation, in terms of his buzz in the game by taking on Joe Joyce. And if he could have beat Joyce, that would have really boosted his standing with the boxing public and the general public. But I guess they weren't confident enough to take that fight. Still using age as an excuse. I mean, again, they didn't actually use age as an excuse. That's what the Huey Fury fans were saying. It was his dad, Peter, who's saying they're looking at bigger and better things in Joe Joyce's domestic level, basically. Which is kind of strange because Huey Fury is fighting Sam Sexton for the British title. So after they beat Sexton, What's Peter saying? They're going to step up to world level again? European level? He's implying they're going to step up to a level higher than fighting a Joe Joyce. Right? That's what he's saying. So we'll see who Huey Fury ends up fighting should he get past Sam Sexton. I fully expect him to get past Sexton. Uh, his, his dad also said that He's been working on Huey Fury being more aggressive because they believe they won the Joseph Parker fight and they were robbed of the decision. So they feel like they've got to take matters into their own hands and be more aggressive and start getting stoppages rather than leaving it to the judges. That's what his dad has said. We'll see whether Huey Fury actually executes that against Sexton. He's got enough talent to beat Sexton by stoppage. To knock him out. He's definitely got enough talent. If he steps on the gas. He can stop him. But will he step on the gas? Or will he do what he normally does. And just. Jab his way. To a points victory. We'll see. Either way. I I'd be very surprised. If Huey Fury don't beat Sam. I'd be amazed actually. <laughs> if Huey Fury don't beat Sam Sexton. Sexton is. Actually way past his best. And he was only ever. A domestic level heavyweight anyway and he wasn't he was never even the best domestically so 
it's a fight Huey Fury should be winning quite comfortably. And I, that's what I'm expecting. Anyway, let me know how you feel in the comment section below about everything I've talked about in this video. It's happening, I'm out.